guys, Alec Pierce at the ranch again with another idea that just might make your life a little more, uh, a little easier. I was going to say exciting. This isn't exciting, but maybe a little bit easier. You see, we have a number of trailers here at the ranch. Yeah, most people that have a small property or, or even live in the city, lots of people have trailers. You might have a small utility trailer. You might have a boat trailer, snowmobile trailer, and on it goes. So here at the ranch specifically, we do have a good size utility trailer. Uh, and, and then we also have a travel trailer, a house trailer, and we have a horse trailer. Uh, I think that's it. We've cut down on our trailers as much as we can. They're a darn nuisance. But anyway, uh, my point is this, that uh, often we find ourselves having to move the trailers around. The horse trailer and the travel trailer, the house trailer in particular, we need to move them around. And it's a bit of a nuisance, you know, to get the pickup truck out, put the hitch on, and back it up, and, and get it all fitted and everything else, just so we have to move it a few feet somewhere else, either for cleaning, or a travel trailer for winterizing, or springerizing, and whatever, and uh, getting it ready to use. So, uh, so I came up with this idea, and, uh, and I think it's going to, I haven't tried it yet. Uh, but I think it's going to be fantastic. And I'm thinking particularly of the travel trailer. We keep our travel trailer inside, in the shed. And the travel trailer is eight and a half feet wide, and the space in between the beams and the, uh, and the shed are nine feet. Yeah, you see the problem. So we have to be very, very careful as we back the trailer in between those beams, keeping it nice and straight to back it in, into the shed to keep it under cover. And, uh, and normally what I've been doing is using the tractor. I back up the uh, the tractor to the trailer, whatever it happens to be, and then I can use the uh, three-point hitch. I have a bar with balls on it, and I use the three-point hitch and get underneath and lift a little bit. But that isn't absolutely perfect. First of all, that bar tends to tilt. Even if you have a, a stabilizing uh, uh, bar on it, it still moves a little bit, a little bit shaky. And uh, secondly, I'm, I'm constantly looking over my shoulder to see where I'm going. And, and it's a little more difficult. Also, tractors, if you're familiar with tractors, the, the, the rear wheels, the big rear wheels, don't actually move very much. So front wheels that move back and forth. So it's a little difficult sometimes to make quick uh, changes if you're backing it in and you need to make a move. Anyway, the point is that I decided I need to have a, I need to make something to make moving our trailers easier. So I did. What I have here is a bucket trailer hitch. Now, a bucket trailer hitch. And I think this is going to be just great. This is going to go onto the bucket of the tractor, which is on the front of the tractor, the bucket of the tractor. Now, having it on the front is easy, is nice, because I can see what's happening. I can drive the tractor up to the trailer, whatever it happens to be, the horse trailer or house trailer, and I can bring the ball up underneath the uh, the uh, receiver, underneath the, uh, the hitch on the trailer, in exactly the right spot, and then I can lift the trailer up a little bit. I don't have to go cranking and all that. I don't have to lift it up. I can lift it up with the with the, with the bucket of the tractor because it's very strong. And then I can move it. I can pull it out very easily. I can watch the whole time to make sure I'm not bumping anything. And if I'm putting one of the trailers away somewhere, particularly in a tight spot like our house trailer, I can watch. I can back it in very carefully and watch where I'm going. Back it right in nice and neatly. Lower the bucket, set the trailer down, and back away. I think it's going to be fantastic. I'll certainly uh, let you know. When I, when I find out. Now, the, I didn't see any of these on the market. I did find uh, a, a picture of a bucket mount, uh, uh, what's it called, trailer hitch, uh, but, uh, but it wasn't very clear and it, it, didn't look, uh, it didn't look like it was very practical, so I made one. Now, here's, here's the finished product. Everything, when I say finished, everything except for the paint. You know, I love to paint things, so I had to have a nice coat of glossy black paint on it to match everything. But there's the finished product. Now, how did I get to this point? How do you build this? Uh, I did see one that were the picture, and the fellow wanted $200 for it. I built this for $25. And $6 of that was, is for paint. I had to buy a can of paint. So I've got $20 invested in this, and it's strong. It fits my tractor bucket perfectly, and it, it accepts uh, the, the hitch. I'll show you the hitch in, in just a minute, and so I can lift any one of my trailers. How do I build this? Well, I've got a series of uh, pictures, images that Kevin's going to post on there. And you can see in the one of them, that I started out with some ordinary 2-inch tubing. Now, this is 2-inch inside diameter. It's actually 2.5-inch out. You have to have a full clear two inches in. So two and a half inches outside and a thick wall with a clear two inches in so that a, a standard uh, a ball hitch like this will slide in. You see? Yeah, that slides in and your pin goes through and you're all set to go. 
So once you get your, your little bit of steel, your steel tube, start up with this main piece of tube like this. I made mine 13 inches long. I don't know why I made it 13. I, I did a lot of measuring. I just figured 13 is enough. So I made it 13 inches long. And, and on one end, I drilled the, uh, the 7 8 hole for the pin, for the hitch. Simple enough. And on the other end, you'll notice I have a little piece of metal welded on here. It's just a little half-inch piece of metal. Now, I did this specifically because my tractor has a lip on the bottom. It's a half inch lip. So when this goes in on the bottom of my blade of my bucket, it slides in and then that little piece pops up and locks in there so that, so that the lip on the front of the tractor holds this in place. It can't pull out. And then to hold it there, I made this, uh, this bolt that just screws down and clamps this whole device in place. It's really quite simple. So, uh, and there's a picture I think that Kevin has to show you this this initial piece, the first piece. Now this is where it got interesting. Uh, and and the nice thing about this is you can custom make this to fit your tractor. That's really what you have to do. It's pretty hard to to buy something like this that fits every tractor really well. I've had that problem before. So this is custom made to fit my particular bucket. You need to do the same. Having got this bottom piece, that's the major piece. Now you have to measure in this area and see how much space you need in this area in order to be able to slide this onto your bucket and lock it in place. Once you have this dimension, the rest is pretty easy. Get another short piece, two inch tubing, two and a half inch tubing, and then make this angle. Now I used a piece of two and a half inch tubing in here and cut them so they matched. I put an extra piece of metal in to make it extra strong because this is where all the strain is. Uh, the, the, the trailer, and there's not much strain actually, three to 500 pounds is pushing down on here. This is on the top of the, of the bucket, so it's pushing down on here. So make sure that this particular piece in here is extra strong. I have a couple of pictures as Kevin's showing you now that show you the steps that I went through as I put all these pieces together. And then afterwards, lots of angle grinding to make it smooth, to make it pretty. I've said many, many times that I can weld, but I'm not a welder. My welds are strong, they're not beautiful, but I'm an artist with an angle grinder. <laughs> so you see it's beautiful, and once this is painted, it'll look really, really nice. One of the uh, issues that I did run into was with this bolt. I got a hardened half-inch bolt that would go down in. And if you look in the end, and I believe there's a picture for this as well that Kevin is showing you, I, I actually welded a hardened nut, hex nut, half-inch hex nut, inside. And then I also threaded the bottom of the tube. So this turns very, very smoothly now in and out. And then the last moment I said, hey, this is a nuisance. I don't want to have to carry around and find and, and, and a, a three-quarter inch wrench all the time to put this off and on. So I just welded a handle on it. And that makes it easy. You can crank it down, make it nice and tight. You don't have to find a wrench. So there's the whole device. And it slips onto the uh, trailer bucket. Uh, there's a couple of pictures that Kevin is showing you right now that show it slipping on from the top and also from the bottom. So you can see how on my bucket, this, this half-inch plate locks into the bucket. So you slip it onto your bucket of your tractor, and then you put your hitch in. And this particular hitch is handy because it has all three balls, all three common balls. Instant seven eighths for a small utility trailer, and then two inch, probably the most common ball out there for most utility trailers and snowmobile trailers and stuff like that. And then the uh, the uh, two and seven sixteenths ball, two and seven sixteenths it is, whatever, uh, uh, seven sixteenths ball for larger trailers. This is the one that we use on the travel trailer and on the horse trailer. So once you get this mounted onto your bucket, nice and tight, you simply slide this through and uh, and you can turn it so the pin fits, lock the pin in place, <coughs> put, put the clip on the plant pin and uh, go and move your trailer. So I'm going to make another picture in just a minute once I get this painted up really nicely for you to see, but I thought that you might want to see that. If you have a lot of trailers <coughs> around as well and you're constantly having to move your trailers, and it's a nuisance for you, you might find something of this really, really handy. Again, I got about 20 bucks invested, maybe, well, a full day. I didn't do it in one day. I had two or three hours here and there, but probably it worked out to six to eight hours of welding and grinding a little bit of paint and so on, and I think it's a great idea. I'll let you know how it works in, a, in, a, in another short video. I'll actually and uh, uh, show you how this is working to move one of our trailers. Anyway, there's an idea. Maybe you have some suggestions for me on how to improve it. Maybe you've seen one of these, and it might just be something that you could use. Okay, Alec Pierce at the ranch. I'm going to paint this and give it a try. Talk to you again soon. Mm -hmm.